Hello, my creative friend. Surprise, Pamela here. Well, here we are, halfway through 2023. And I'll be honest with you, I have not been creating. I haven't even been doing any paint overs. And I don't know, for some reason today, I just thought, you know what? I am going to go into the studio and I think I'm going to do it. I'm just going to open a new journal for 2023. And without even thinking about what I'm going to do, I'm just going to glue down some papers and get started creating again. I did do several darker pages using my um, um, jelly plate. And I think I'm going to use one of those as a background. These, um, I don't have these on my website as printables that you can print off. Um, it's just some that uh, I was looking at and realizing I had a really a lot of bright colors prior to 2023. And when I did some at the beginning of the year, I don't know what happened. I just kind of been painting very dark. I need to change my palette. That's, that's all I can say. I need to bring some light and happiness back into my creativity. Anyways, let's get started. I just wanted to pop in real quick and say, miss you guys. Hope you enjoy this uh, paint over. Enough of me. Here you go, you guys. Enjoy. I hope you get started with your creativity and let's do a paint over. Bye. Welcome to our first 2023 Let's Paint It Over. Now for this year, I am just going to use a regular composition book, which are pretty cheap. Sometimes you can get those at your local dollar store and sometimes usually around the school year, they sell them in packs where they're like under a dollar. The paper can be a little thin for mixed media, but you can stiffen it a little bit using a gel medium. I am just gonna be collaging directly onto the paper, which will actually help to strengthen the paper a little bit. For this paint over, I'm gonna be using some light blue. I have a burnt sienna. We're gonna try my unbleached titanium. Gonna be using my azo green, which is like a yellow green. I do also have a fluorescent green on here. I have a pyrrole red, but you could really use any red that you want to. Um, and I will still be using um, my sepia um, high flow. You could really use just any kind of brown. You don't have to pay for that. It's a little spendy sometimes. I am going to uh, use some magazine images, of course. I'm going to paint over this face. I love the saying that it says on here, um, life adjusts to you. So I'm going to be incorporating that into my paint over. Um, I have uh, this, oh, I love these. I haven't used them in so long. You ever go to the paint store and they have like what they call chips of what colors look like? These um, actually put like images on there. I've been keeping it forever. I'm going to use it. And this, this is out of a magazine. They're supposed to be flowers, but they're kind of made out of like fabric, you know, some magical magazine type stuff. I have this little flower that's been laying on my desk forever. I, I might use it. Not sure about that. I have some washi tape I'm going to use. And I have this feather. It fell on the floor. I think I'm going to use that for some texture. Um, I'll use my brayer. And then also I have my circle template, which I love. Since I haven't created in a long time, I'm going to try to use things that make me feel pretty comfortable. Um, this hand actually goes with the face. And so I'm going to be using that. Out of my stash of jelly plate prints, I'm going to be using this one, which has a little bit of orange in it. Now this print paper fits pretty good entirely on this page, but I am going to trim it down a little bit. For this year, I want to kind of put like a frame around my finished images. And this little composition book is a little bit bigger than the last book that we used last year. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, you can just use a ruler to tear these down. You don't have to use scissors if you don't want to. After trimming down the sides, it gives me a really nice edge for a painted frame. I'm just going to be using some gel medium directly onto the composition page. Um, I do wind up later putting a piece of um, plastic wrap between the, actually it's wax paper, between the pages. I forgot to do that and I realized that needs to be done so that I don't make the pages stick together. 
now that I have the wax paper between the paper, I am going to just apply the gel medium directly to the paper and then lay the full sheet of the uh, gel plate print directly on here. I will use a used gift card to kind of um, smooth out this paper because I don't want it to buckle at all. I don't necessarily go over the entire jelly print with gel medium, but as I'm applying the other paper elements, uh, you know, a little bit of that uh, gel medium will get over the top of this. I will cut out my saying and my face. I'm not going to use all of her hair. Um, so I'll cut her, actually cut around her, her face here. I'm thinking I want to give her like a little whimsical hat. So I probably will trim down a little bit more the hair on the side. Now for her whimsical hat, I'm going to use one of those flowers from the other magazine image. I'll get that cut out. And then I will also cut out the feathers from that paint chip, which I think I'm going to use that for her clothing. I had originally thought I would use the entire image of her hand, and I decided just to use her hand, the fingers, and a little bit of her arm. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to put this underneath of her chin. Now with this paint chip image where they've actually are using like feathers from a bird um, to give you an example of the type of paint that you can get from them, um, I am just going to use a portion of this as her outfit rather than give her a full on outfit. I think just part of it will work good. I'll come back in later and do a little bit of line work just to kind of give you the ideal. But I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. The words will hang down from her little hat on the left hand side there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all glued down. Again, I'm using just some gel medium to attach it on here. And I will go over um, these images after they're attached because I want to make sure they are sealed before I start adding acrylic paint. And I do use again the um, used gift card to make sure that everything is adhered down and that there aren't any bubbles. Now one tip I want to share with you is if you are applying something and it's really thick, most times you can pull off the back layer of paper and actually have a thinner piece of paper to apply. And that's what I am doing with that paint chip. It actually was on like a very thin cardboard type of paper and it just was really too thick compared to all the other paper, you know, that I put down. So I'm just going to get her hand and arm here in place and then I'm going to use um, the gift card to go over the entire thing and make sure that I squeeze out any air bubbles that might have formed. One last thing I'm going to put on here is some washi tape. One thing I've learned about some washi tape is it is a removable tape and I don't want this peeling off later on. So I'm actually going to put down a thin coat of gel medium, put the tape down on here and then also apply some of the gel medium directly over the tape. Alrighty, I'm ready to start painting. I hope you guys enjoy and I'll chat with you later.
using the feather just to apply some texture to the background. I'm going to be swishing it across and then I realize it's a little distractive for me. And so I decide I will kind of try to blend out here some of that color that I pushed into the background. And then I'm just going to tap into the colors that I have on my palette and actually tap back on to my paper. I have it all going in one direction and this is where I decide, hmm, I think I'm going to change the angle and actually tap it the opposite way so that you have a little bit of movement in the background. I'll also do the same thing down here in the corner just to kind of balance it out a little bit. Guess what time it is? It is circle time. Now I did apply um, paint directly in these circles and it kind of smooshed out a little bit past the template. Probably using a red pen would have worked a little bit cleaner, but I'll go back in and I'll actually clean up some of the edges on these circles. And I also add a circle at the top of her hat. I'll bring in some white highlights. I'm just using white gesso here on her cheeks and her head. I'll also outline her hand a little bit with the white gesso. Now one last thing that I did with her is I did outline some of the edges around her with a white and a black Posca pen and you'll see that in the final image. I hope you enjoyed this painted over and I look forward to seeing what you create. Take care, be kind to yourself, bye! Mm -hmm.